What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to focus on source patching and also track targeting down in the timeline. So let's get started. Let's head on the timeline panel, which you'll notice I've already imported some, some clips of the ocean. I have some audio tracks. I also have on the second audio track, I have some voiceover. And then the third audio track, I have a song. So let's head over to this area here. And you notice there's two little lanes. One where this mouse is going with the blue squares, and then if you move over to the middle, there's a second lane with different blue squares. And in the middle one, you'll see it says V1, which is for video one, and then it goes upward V2, V3. And each of these represent the track here. And you can have different items on the track like we do in the audio. So let's head down there. I have audio one, which has this audio associated with the clip. I have audio two, which is the voiceover we talked about. And I have audio three, which is the song. So those are the three different tracks we have established. And remember, you can add as many tracks as you want. But right now I'm gonna focus on this. So let's go back to the source patching line, which is this line right here. And this blue is indicating where we want anything from the source panel to be imported. That's the, that's the track it's gonna place it on. So for example, I have this beautiful shot of this boardwalk up here. I have this override button that I'm gonna click. And remember, whenever I click that, wherever this playhead is, that's exactly where it's gonna place it. Now, if we go here to the source patching, you'll see the blue square is highlighted in video one. So that's indicating that's where it's gonna go. So if we hit that, you'll notice it places that inside the video one track exactly where the playhead was. Let's move the playhead down here and let's do that one more time. And it just placed it right there. Now, let's say we don't want it on that video one track. Let's say we want it on video two. I'm gonna undo that. Now I'm gonna come over to the source patching line, which is remember the one on the left. And just think of source window for source patching because that's coming from the source panel. And let's just move this up to track, you know, to make it more obvious, let's move it to track three. So now it's on video track three. Now, if I hit this button now, look where the playhead is. It's gonna throw it here on video track three. And if I move the playhead again, and I click the override button, it's gonna drop it in there again. So I'm gonna delete that. So anywhere this is placed, that's where you're gonna deliver anything from the source window here by these buttons here. That's where it's gonna automatically go. So let's put this down on V1. And you notice that there's only one, and this is above the video line, because this clip it does not have an audio associated with it. So let's pick one that does have an audio associated with it. I'm gonna double click this one. And now you can see automatically, there's a blue box for video one, and there's a blue box for audio one. Now for some reason, if you wanna add the audio from this clip in the source panel and you want to move it to a different track, you can move it to audio three if you want. And let's just say you want the video on audio two. As soon as you click this override button from the source panel, the video has been placed in to video track two because that's where you put the source patching button. But you notice the audio, it wasn't put in audio two, it was put in audio three because that's where we had this audio button moved. So you can move them wherever you like them placed. I'm going to undo that. And then let's move to the middle one that's track targeting, which is this blue section right here, right in the middle. So this is when you're working with stuff inside the track, not from the source window. So let's just say on that same, this, it's exact same concept. So let's say this little clip down here, and let's say you're doing shortcuts. So I'm gonna copy and pasting. So I've clicked this, I'm gonna copy it by doing a Command C on a Mac or Control C on a PC. And let's move the playhead over here. And let's just say I wanna paste it right here. So I'm gonna do Command V as in Victor, and you notice it pastes it right there in the middle because that's where I have this indication. But if I move this up to the top and I do the same paste, I'll move over here, and let me do Command V for paste, you'll notice it places on this. And let's go further down, and I'm gonna move that down here to track two, not track three, and do Command V, which is paste, and it's gonna throw right there. So essentially, these are indicators of you telling the computer where you want the shortcuts to throw it. Because remember, when you learn the shortcuts, you're gonna edit much quicker. You're not gonna do the grab and drop and move, and you can do it that way too, but that just takes longer. When you learn the shortcuts, you can just be like, bam, you know, and then move this here. If you're doing a B-roll and you want all the B-roll to be on track two, you can constantly just be adding tracks, adding songs, adding whatever you like, as simple as a quick. Just remember the one on the left is the source patching, and this indicates where you want the track to be placed from the source panel. And then the one in the middle is working directly inside the timeline here. And then you can move those wherever you like to target whichever you like. And another feature too is when you're working with this area down here, if there's something, if you want the song not to be accidentally cut up or moved, 
you can always just lock the track. And no matter what you do, you can't damage that track by accident. So that's always good to remember, these little lock tracks. And you can lock as many as you want or as few as you want. And that'll just ensure that the clip doesn't get damaged. Because if you're working in a thing that's, you know, your project's 45 minutes long, and you're working at a small section, you might not even notice that you've damaged the audio and then pushed all of it down or something. You can always lock it, which is nice. And if you want to watch more tutorials about learning Adobe Premiere Pro, please subscribe to the channel so you can get notified when new videos come out. Anyway, thank you for watching and enjoy your day. Later.